Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today we're going to be deciding which polymers are the most useful. So let's get started. Polyethylene is probably the most commonly used polymer in the world. It can be used for so many different applications. It's used for food containers, it's used for storage. You can make all sorts of things out of polyethylene. It's got good resistance. If you have modern food wrap, that's usually made of polyethylene. Polyethylene is super duper useful, and for that reason, we're going to put it into S tier. Now we have several other ones here, so let's go. Here we have spandex. So a lot of people like spandex for various reasons. One of the reasons is that it makes form factor for clothing much nicer. It can make forms look a little bit more generous. And this is just one example of a polyurethane. This is, this is a neat uh, linkage here. We have a carbamate linkage. This is made from two different monomers. And so spandex has some utility, you know, in clothing. It's like a, it's a useful thing. But, you know, overall, it still has somewhat limited applications, at least in the form of spandex. So for that reason, I think we should put it in D tier. Now let's look at another one like this poly cell phone. So poly cell phones are pretty cool because poly cell phones tolerate much harsher conditions than many other polymers. There are certain containers in the fast food industry, for instance, which are made of poly cell phone. They can just tolerate higher temperatures and they're a more uh, stable and robust alternative to some things like polycarbonate. So it has some applications, although it's still relatively niche. So I think we should probably put it in C tier. Actually, you know, I think maybe we're a little bit too harsh on spandex. Let's move spandex up to C tier and then we can put polysulfone in D tier. So polybutadiene is a polymer, and you can see that there's this double bond here. So the cool thing about polybutadiene is you can take objects made out of it and make them stretchier or like more compressive. Rubbers are super useful for a lot of different applications. I think polybutadiene belongs at least in B tier. If you've never heard of Nomex before, Nomex is another cool one because Nomex is present in, for instance, firefighter outfits. So this is a nice thermally resistive material. It's often combined with other polymers such as Kevlar, which we can get to in a minute, just to add some structural stability. But Nomex is a really useful polymer just for its high temperature tolerance. And while there are some alternatives, Nomex is still an excellent choice for making flame resistant materials, especially clothing. So for that reason, I think Nomex belongs in B tier. B because it cannot be beaten. Now there's a couple other interesting ones like nylon. Let's go through the nylons and then we can come back to Kevlar. So nylon's really useful for both clothing as well as for some materials like rope. If you've ever used that yellow rope that you might have at your hardware store, that's usually made of nylon. Now which nylon it's made of is not necessarily clear, as Nylon 6 was made to get around the patent space of Nylon 6.6. So both of these are kind of cool. They're definitely versatile as they can be used both in textiles and in clothing. So for that reason, I think we can keep them in C tier. Now I'm just going to shrink these down so that we have room to fit everything in here. Okay. So the next one that we're going to look at will be Kevlar. So Kevlar is well known. If you've never heard of Kevlar before, it's well known for its use in bulletproof vests, although it's also used in many applications where you just need the material to be more durable. So if your typical cotton or other material like polyester just doesn't do the job, or if you're at, for instance, a location where a lot of wear and tear occurs, Kevlar can be a really good option. So Kevlar is pretty cool. And so for that reason, I think we need to put it in B tier with Nomex. And as with the other ones, I'm just going to shrink these down so that we can fit everything in here. If you miss where one of them ranked, you could just rewind the video and check what it was. Okay, let's look at another one like protein. So people like protein for many reasons. One of those reasons is that it keeps us alive. Protein is an essential nutrient. Now, whether your body has the ability to make the specific amino acids in that protein or not kind of comes down to which amino acids make up the protein. But proteins are really useful, you know, they make up the structure of our body in a lot of ways. They're present in enzymes. So I think protein, without a doubt, has to go into S tier, because like most living things, in fact, all living things, require protein to survive. So for that reason, I think we can put it into S tier fairly safely. Now another interesting one is polydimethylsiloxane. PDMS can be used in non-stick coatings. So for instance, if you ever have cooking spray in a can, a compressed can, and if you look on the ingredients list, it will usually have polydimethylsiloxane. Polydimethylsiloxane is also present in, for instance, implants that people use, or in silly putty. Other applications where you might be producing silicones often have polydimethylsiloxane in them, although some other silicones can exist. So there's various different applications for polydimethylsiloxane. It is somewhat limited compared to some of the other polymers on here. So for that reason, I think we're going to be a little bit harsher and put it in B tier, maybe C tier if we decide to move later on. Oftentimes you need uh, quite expensive catalysts to make these work, although they're cheap enough that anybody can buy silicone mix relatively cheaply. So it's not too bad. Now polypropylene is another really commonly used polymer. 
similar to polyethylene, it's a little bit more thermally resistive. So that's kind of an advantage it has going for it. But you can see consumer products absolutely everywhere with polypropylene. It's super duper ubiquitous. This one also belongs in S tier. So this is kind of an interesting one here, polyvinyl butyrol, which is a polymer that I hadn't heard of before. It's a common coating for, for instance, car windshields. And so this thin film coating is useful to prevent when the glass breaks, this kind of like grabs onto all of it. And so that's kind of a useful application. And in the coming years, we'll see how useful it is in coating in other applications. So this one's pretty obscure to me. And for that reason, I'm gonna put it in F tier. If you disagree, you can let me know down below. Now, another classic polymer that everybody's heard of is polystyrene, usually in terms of polystyrene waste. If you're an actual uh, scientist and you're confused why I'm not talking about a lot of the other properties of polymers in this episode, because that's outside of the scope of this episode. But if you've ever had styrofoam, that's polystyrene, and a lot of disposable cutlery and plates are often made of polystyrene as well. So polystyrene is super useful in those applications. It's present in consumer products, like in general, almost anything you have is probably made of polystyrene or polyethylene in terms of consumer products, but, but not necessarily. There are exceptions for sure. When I say consumer products, I'm mostly talking about, for instance, like if you have a computer mouse or if you have something made of plastic on your wall or something like that, it's quite often polystyrene, polypropylene, or polyethylene, although there are exceptions. One of those exceptions is polyethylene terephthalate, which is another really, really useful polymer. Now, chemically, I don't like this one too much because it has ester linkages, and I know that those are chemically labile. So I'm going to be a little bit more critical in that sense, but I'm not going to allow that to affect the score for this episode because we're talking about how useful these are as polymers. And this is an extremely versatile polymer. You can make soda bottles out of it, for instance. You can make polyester out of it. If you've got polyester clothing, that's got a lot of utility to it. And so there are other esters present in polyesters, except the most common one happens to be PET, polyethylene terephthalate. So there's other consumer products that feature this as well, but the most common bottle material, for instance, for plastic bottles is polyethylene terephthalate. And so because bottles contain soda, we're going to have to put this right into S tier. Now, another interesting one is polyethylene glycol. And if you've had your COVID vaccine, for instance, you'll be familiar with polyethylene glycol as being one of the ingredients. And so this could be a useful additive for formulations in general. This can help solubilize things. And that's often a desirable property for you to have in a product. This can also be used in various scientific applications as it has a relatively high boiling point, And people often make derivatives of these in science to make stuff more polar, but still a little bit lipophilic. So definitely useful. I'd say it's less useful than the main plastics. And so for that reason, I'm gonna put it in D tier. Maybe we should put it in E tier because there's an ethylene in there. Now, another interesting one is polyacrylonitrile. Now I originally thought that acrylonitrile was actually present in superglue. I was mistaken. That's uh, cyanoacrylates and their derivatives. Now, the interesting thing about polyacrylonitrile is it's actually present in carbon fiber and it's one of the main materials that you have in carbon fiber. So this is kind of cool. You always look at cars with uh, carbon fiber. It's definitely interesting. It's relatively uh, less common than the other polymers that we have here so far. So for that reason, I'm going to put it into D tier. Now, polymethyl methacrylate is another extremely common polymer, okay? So polymethyl methacrylate, if you've ever had a dental filling and it wasn't an amalgam, like a mercury amalgam, it's probably a plastic composed of polymethyl methacrylate. It's also used for repairing cracks in windshields, although there are other plastics that can be used for that purpose. It's present for a lot of consumer products. If you ever work with acrylic, it's almost certainly polymethyl methacrylate. This is another super ubiquitous plastic. We're going to have to put it into S tier. Now, if you like non-stick surfaces, you might be a fan of polytetrafluoroethylene, PTFE. This is in non-stick frying pans, for instance, although there are other applications. If you've done any work with pipe fittings, for instance, Teflon tape is often used to uh, make things seal better. And the reason it seals better is it just is able to like have less friction and get on tighter and tighter, which can be very desirable when you're fitting different joints together. Now, there's other applications using Teflon as a lubricant because it's hydrophobic and lipophobic as well because there's fluorines there. Those fluorines make water not want to interact with it, and they also make fats not want to interact with it because the fluorine just also repels normal, typical lipophilic molecules. So it's just super duper useful. Even though it's not that thermally stable, if you heat to really high temperatures, it can break down. It's still extremely useful, and so I'm going to put it into A tier for that reason. Now it doesn't have ideal properties if you wanted to make like a bottle out of it because it's super hard. It's not very flexible. So maybe we could be like a little bit harsher on it. And uh, methods of manipulating this are also a little bit hard. So we, we can be a little bit harsher on it. 
Now there's some other cool ones here like polyvinyl alcohol. So polyvinyl alcohol, if you're uh, a student here studying chemistry, the practice problem for today is to determine how polyvinyl alcohol is made. If you draw out the monomer of this polymer, you'll be like confused how that's possible. And so I'd encourage you to try and work that one out. Polyvinyl alcohol is useful in several different applications, for instance, in contact lenses, in eyedroppers, for instance, and there's other applications in biology that use it because it has good biocompatibility. So it's definitely interesting, but it has a little bit less versatility than some of the other ones we've talked about. And so for that reason, I'm going to put it in C tier. It's also used in 3D printing, so I'll give it a little bit of a break. Speaking of 3D printing, let's look at polylactic acid. PLA, polylactic acid, is one of the main polymers that's used in 3D printing. If you have a mold and you use polylactic acid, you can like put it in as a melt and then mold stuff out of it. This is super useful for prototyping stuff that you might want to make. So PLA is pretty useful. I think we're going to put it in A tier. I don't know why I've left such a big space in A tier up to this point. I apologize. Why don't we move one up there just to even things out? Let's put PTFE in there. So another cool one is sodium polyacrylate. And if you've ever worn a diaper before, which if you're an adult, at some point you likely wore diapers, you might have had a diaper containing sodium polyacrylate. This is present as a super absorbent polymer. And because this is part of the repeat unit, you can see that there's a salt here. This is a sodium carboxylate. And so what this means is it's able to absorb lots of water. And so for instance, if you urinate, which mostly contains water, hopefully, it's able to get absorbed into the material in the diaper, and then you don't have that liquid pressed against you as much if most of it has been wicked away by the superabsorbent polymer. Oftentimes, sodium polyacrylate is also used in the formulation of certain foods and other ingredients, just to kind of help everything stay mixed together as a sort of emulsifier. So sodium polyacrylate is really useful. Uh, superabsorbent polymers are a really cool topic. If you think it's a topic I should cover in a future video, make sure you let me know down below. And let's find another molecule to talk about. PVDF is one that's also relatively common. It's less commonly discussed outside of uh, synthetic communities, but it's present for, for instance, biomedical piping. So certain applications require ultra pure water. The pipes that are transporting this water often are made of PVDF. Another cool application of PVDF is in batteries as well as in wires as an insulator. So it has some applications, definitely interesting, but relatively limited overall. So for that reason, I'm gonna put it in E tier, although it does have some cool applications. Now, a similar looking one is Saran. And if you've ever worked with Saran wrap before, you might have worked with PVDC, which is kind of like PVDF, except we got chlorines instead of fluorines. And so the original Saran wrap was made of this material, although in modern Saran wrap, people use polyethylene. And the reason for that is there's less chlorine content, there's less discoloring when you uh, manufacture it. The problem is if you heat this up, there's an alpha hydrogen right beside this chlorine on the adjacent carbon, and this can eliminate off HCl, and then it can make a double bond, and that can cause some discoloration, as the polymer contains a lot of those. So if you get a lot of double bonds in a row, that'll kind of cause it to go browner, which isn't always desired. Occasionally, however, people still add this as a surface coating on polyethylene film for food wrap. The disadvantage of normal polyethylene food wrap is it doesn't work as well and there's more oxygen that penetrates through and gets to the food so it doesn't do as good of a job as the original saran wrap so it's still cool it's uh kind of like lost its glory so for that reason we're going to put it in f tier but it definitely works a lot better when you have the real stuff now a polymer that's just absolute garbage i'm going to be a little bit less harsh on this just because i looked at paraformaldehyde so paraformaldehyde uh yeah it's a polymer this is just kind of how you get formaldehyde though and if you want to do anything with formaldehyde, you have to crack the polymer and just treat it with like an acid or a base in water and let it like chew up and convert back to the monomer. There's not too much that you can do with the polymer other than not have the monomer. So that's kind of garbage. So we're going to put that into F tier. However, it's really common as a solution that you use in biology or in other applications. Okay, so a couple cool ones. Why don't we do nitrocellulose? If you're a fan of energetic compounds, yeah, you'll be a fan of nitrocellulose. So nitrocellulose is used in gun cotton. It also has other names that are similar, indicating that it is very nitrated. You can see all of the OH groups of cellulose, which we have down here, have been replaced with nitrate groups. And so this has a lot of oxygen ready to go, ready to chew up the cellulose as soon as you give it a chance to go. Now, that being said, it does have some applications that are not energetic. So you can, for instance, have nitrocellulose film, which is something that's really, really common. And a cool video about nitrocellulose in film was recently published by Smarter Every Day, and I'll include a link to that here. So nitrocellulose, it has some applications. Overall, it's still somewhat limited, but it is kind of cool, so I'll put it into D tier. Another cool one is polyvinyl pyrrolidine, also known as povidone. If you've ever had to sterilize a cow's udders, you've probably used iodine povidone before. 
It's used in glue sticks, for instance, also in hairspray. It's got many applications and it just does a really great job uh, dissolving stuff because it's super polar. So for that reason, I think we can probably put it in B tier, maybe even into A tier. Super duper useful polymer. Now polycarbonate is another kind of cool one. So most of the time when you see plastic glass, it's polycarbonate, not always, but quite often. It's useful because it's super thermally stable. There, there are more stable ones. Polycarbonate is a kind of cool one because it's used in CDs and DVDs. So if you've ever wondered what the plastic in CDs and DVDs are, it's usually some polycarbonate. Additionally, it can be used in constructing materials such as like walls, barriers, etc. So polycarbonate, it's pretty versatile, although it does tend to yellow with age. So you can be a little bit harsher on it and put it into B tier. So we have three left. We have cellulose, polyether, ether ketone, and neoprene. So polyether ether ketone is another rock solid polymer and it's used in high stress environments where you want a lot of uh, tolerance to wear and tear. So polyether ether ketone, it's got some cool applications, although it's not used as frequently as many of the other polymers used here. If you've worked with polyether ether ketone before, let me know down in the comments. I'm going to be a little bit harsher on this one and put it into E tier. So we have two left, neoprene and cellulose. So neoprene is kind of a cool one because it has more stability than your typical rubber. It's got more chemical resistance. So you often have this in applications such as aquatic applications. Some clothing can be made from it, and it has more desirable properties in rubber in general. Neoprene is useful as it's also used in anti-corrosive coatings. So neoprene has some uses, definitely, although it's a little bit more expensive than your typical rubber. So we can be a little bit harsher on it, although it's like fairly versatile. We can put it in C tier. Now, last but not least, we have cellulose. So cellulose is used in many applications. If you're working with paper or wood, there's a lot of cellulose in there. I apologize for not including lignin in this tier list as it was somewhat challenging to include the structure of lignin or any other polymer such as epoxies in this just due to their structure. But cellulose itself is pretty useful. If you're wearing a cotton t-shirt right now, there's cellulose in that. So most of our clothing is still made of cellulose. A lot of our construction is still made out of wood and a lot of us still write on paper. Cellulose is definitely an S tier material. Thanks for watching. As a biologist, I have mastered the rare skill of micropipetting using only my mouth. At first, I swallowed a couple of cancer cell cultures and HIV infected blood by accident. But now that I am able to perfectly control my suck down to nanoliter precision, I never repeat, I never repeat such a novice mistake. Thank you for listening, mouth pipetters.